Hello, my name is Paul Weiser. I'm a PhD student at the Medical University of Vienna. And today I will talk about the reconstruction and coil combination of undersampled concentric ring MRSI data using a graph unit. MR spectroscopy imaging is an imaging modality that has many applications in medicine as it allows the identification of various biochemical substances. In MRSI, irregular sampling schemes can be beneficial and for those, deep learning-based reconstruction is lacking. Therefore, we investigate geometric deep learning for case-based reconstruction of undersampled concentric ring MRSI data. The current state-of-the-art approach for reconstruction of undersampled multi-coil data is parallel imaging with schemes such as Sensei and Grappa. The second is a kernel-based approach and therefore naturally gives rise to deep learning-based methods. Hence, in this work, graph units are proposed for the reconstruction of non-Cartesian case-based data. Non-water-suppressed MRSI data was collected from seven volunteers in 10 random positions. The data of the first six volunteers was used for training and the data of the last volunteer was split up into a validation and a testing set. In each scan, concentric ring trajectories were used in total, 16 rings with 388 points per ring each were acquired. Graphs were defined by taking each case based point as a vertex and by connecting two vertices if they lie closer together than 1.5 times the Nyquist criterion. Undersampling was performed by fully sampling the inner six and then skipping every second of the outer rings. The output data for training and evaluation was computed by first transforming the fully sampled data to image space where spirit sensitivity maps were applied and then back to case space. We evaluated two models. The first network, which is referred to as GNN, consists of four Gaussian mixture model convolutional layers, each followed by a tan activation function. The second model, which is referred to as UNET, is built of five convolutional layers. The first two are followed by a max pooling layer and the ReLU activation. The second two are followed by an upsampling layer and again by ReLU. After the final convolutional layer, a tan activation function is applied. Due to the fact that the vertices in the graph have coordinates, max pooling can be defined in a classical manner. Therefore, windows are defined in which the maximum is computed. The window size of the max pooling has a length of four nodes per ring and the width of two rings. After each pooling layer, a new graph has to be defined. This is done by averaging the coordinates of the vertices in each window. The value of the new node is given by the max pooling function. Two vertices in the new graph are connected by an edge if their Euclidean distance is smaller than a certain threshold. Here, we investigate the influence of self-connecting edges. By a self-connecting edge, we mean an edge that connects a node to itself. Its influence on the training of different GNNs is evaluated by omitting it during the training. First, the four-layer GNN was trained on fully sampled and undersampled data, as well as with and without self-connecting edges. The training and validation loss computed by the mean squared difference is shown in the left figure. We can clearly see that self-connecting edges improve the validation loss during the training of the network in both cases. In the right figure, the training and validation loss of the graph unit with undersampled data with and without self-connecting edges is plotted. In this case, interestingly, the omitted self-connecting edge leads to a reduced and more stable loss. We interpret this behavior as the network being forced to search for informative features in the neighborhood of each node instead of simply passing on information. This may force the unit to search and find more higher level features during the training. On the test set, we reconstructed images from undersampled data by the GNN with self-connecting edges and the graph unit without these edges and applied Fourier transform in all spatial dimensions to reconstruct the image. The mean squared error of each scan position is presented in the table on the right and shows that the unit performs better than the GNN. In the left figure, qualitative results of each approach are shown. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for paying attention.